Hi all, this video is going to continue with more graphs of functions information. Uh, I want to get through some possibly new vocab in this uh, example. So we're going to look at this and then we're going to look at some more definitions. And then I'll have a separate example video to see some of this vocab in action. Okay, so the first pair of uh, vocab words that I want us to look at are increasing, decreasing. So an increasing function is what it sounds like. It's getting bigger, but we need some direction associated with that. So we would say a function is increasing if its y values are getting bigger as its x values get bigger. So here, if y increases as x increases, then the function is increasing. So basically, we want to look at functions and we want to be thinking uh, left to right, if I can get my directions right. So as we move left to right, if our y value gets bigger, the function is increasing. Uh, the function will be decreasing if its y values get smaller when its x values get bigger. So again, always this is thinking left to right. So as I move my way across left to right, are my y values getting bigger or smaller? If they're getting smaller, then I would say the function is decreasing. And then the other pair we're going to look at with these four graphs, pair of vocab words, is concave up, concave down. So a function is concave up. Uh, if its bend opens up, so it looks like it's on some part of a smile, basically. And concave down if its bend opens down. So you're getting pretty informal definitions here. Uh, we have to wait till calculus to get a little bit more formal and precise definition, but I'd like for us to start looking at some of these things now. Concavity in particular, sometimes you don't hear about that until calculus, and people, because it's a new thing, just have a little bit of a hard time spotting it. So I just want you to be able to look at a graph and tell me if it's increasing, decreasing, concave up or concave down. So I have four examples here that we can walk through. And each function is either each picture, so something that's either increasing the entire time or decreasing the entire time, and also either concave up the entire time or concave down the entire time. So feel free to pause me here and go through and try and guess ahead of me and then check yourself. I'm just going to buzz through, but that would be great to see if you're getting this already. Okay, so this function here, as I work my way left to right, my y values get bigger the entire time. So this function is definitely increasing. The bend, this bend opens down, so it looks like we're on some part of a frown. That's concave down. Okay, so this is what increasing concave down looks like. Let's see where I want to go next. I think I'll go to this one. Again, as we're moving from left to right, our y values are getting bigger and bigger. So this function is also increasing. This time our bend is opening upward. So it looks like it's on some part of a smile. That's concave up. Okay, so we have increasing concave down, increasing concave up. Uh, people tend to have more confusion with this one, pairing increasing with a downward bend bugs them more than pairing increasing with an upward bend. Uh, another way to say concave down to yourself would be uh, the slopes are getting smaller. So as I move from left to right, my slopes are getting smaller, whereas on this graph, as I move from left to right, my slopes are getting bigger. It's getting steeper and steeper. All right, bottom pair. This function, as I move from left to right, my y values get smaller, so this is definitely decreasing. Uh, and this time, it looks like I'm on part of a smile. I have upward bend, so this is concave up. And then it's partner right here. Again, as I move from left to right, my y values are getting smaller, so this is decreasing. And it looks like I'm on part of a frown. I have that downward facing bend, so this is concave down. Again, the one that bugs people more here is usually this one when we pair the decreasing with the concave up. And you can use that same thought process as above, but it's a little more confusing here with the slopes getting bigger, slopes getting smaller. I said concave up is slopes getting bigger, and that's still true, but you have to remember these are negative numbers. So maybe this is a slope of negative four, this is a slope of negative one, this is a slope of negative one half. So they're getting less steep, but I would still call that increasing slope because negative one half is bigger than negative two, which is bigger than negative four. 
and the same thing this way concave down should mean slopes getting smaller and it'll mess with people that this is getting steeper as you go but you have to think negative numbers so if this negative one half this is negative one that's gotten smaller if this is negative two that's gotten even smaller okay so those are kind of four basic combinations that we can see I want to go over a little bit more vocab before I move on. I want to mention some symmetry. I don't want to get too carried away with this, but I do want you to know a little bit of the idea behind some of the symmetry. Uh, and I want you to be able to look at a graph and decide whether or not you think it looks like it may be even odd or symmetric about y equals x. Uh, you have to be really careful. A, a graph can look like it's even and not quite be, but I just want you to have that basic idea of what it means. Okay, so even functions are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So for example, let me make a little room here. Here's a function that's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, or at least approximately, this is my rough sketch, but I do mean for it to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So if you take this graph and you fold it in half across the y-axis, the two halves will match up perfectly. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to say this. One is you can say what this means point by point. So if I have a point A, B on my graph, I will also have the point negative A, B on my graph. So uh, reversing your, reversing, taking the opposite X coordinate will give you the exact same Y coordinate if your function is actually even. And that's what this last one is saying using function notation. If you plug in A and you plug in the opposite of A, you should get the same thing. So this is just a represent, F of A is a representation of this B right here. F of negative A is a representation of this B right here. They're both B, so they should be the same thing. So there's a couple of different ways to write it out. All of this is getting at this idea of even. All right, odd. Odd is symmetric with respect to the origin. You could also call this rotational symmetry. So if you turn the graph 180 degrees, it actually looks exactly like what you started with. So an example graph would be something like this. Again, rough sketch. So bear with me if it's not quite perfect, but that would be the idea. And we can go through the same sort of thing. This does tell me something about relationship between pairs of points on the graph. So if I say this point down here is AB, then this point over here would be negative A, negative B. I know this will bug the heck out of some of you. How could this be negative A, negative B when it's in quadrant one? And I want you to remember that a does not have to represent a positive number, and B does not have to represent a positive number. So if AB is in quadrant 3, then A and B are both negative. And the opposite of A will in fact be positive, and the opposite of B will in fact be positive. So we'll have this um, sort of opposite pairs through the origin thing happening. If you, so again, if you rotate 180 degrees, the graph should look exactly the same. Or if you want to think about folding, you'd actually have to fold twice. So if you picked up any one quadrant and fold it across both axes, it doesn't matter what order. So for example, if I pick this up and I fold it across the Y axis, and get this over here, and then across the X axis, and then it'll land exactly on what I have in quadrant three. That's what you should see. And then again, this is just saying the same thing using function notation. So what I've got going here is if I plug in the opposite x value, I get the opposite y value. And that's all this is trying to say. If you plug in negative a and you plug in a, you will get the same numerical value opposite sign. So you could put this minus on either side. So opposite x values pair with opposite y values. Okay, so those are the two really key ones. I do want to mention one that's kind of interesting in a later section, just so that you've thought about it a little bit already. A function can be symmetric with respect to y equals x. There's not a ton of them, but an example would be something like this. So you have to be able to picture kind of a diagonal flip. If I pick this up and flip it across uh, y equals x, it looks exactly the same. 
uh, point by point, the way this would look is if you have point A, B, and you flip it across, it would land at point B, A. You're basically picking up, let's see if I can draw it in here, this little, okay, so this is A, and the height of that is B, and when you flip it across, it lands right here so that this is A and this is B. Uh, so again, this will be interesting when we talk about inverses. I'll get back to this again. Right now, I just want you to have that basic idea of what it looks like if a function is automatic. Oh, I don't know how I'm trying to say this. If a function is symmetric across y equals x and what that means about pairs of points. And then we'll have a little variation on that when we talk about inverses. Okay, last little bit of vocab here. And then I'll end this video and give you some uh, examples on... A specific graph. So local maximum, local minimum. Again, I think we're getting a little bit into calculus vocab here, but it doesn't hurt us while we're looking at graphs to learn a little bit of that vocab. It's nothing particularly tricky. So local maximum is a point whose y value is at least as large as all nearby, nearby y values. So I would say if you can draw a little tiny circle around it so that the point is in the center of the circle, and you don't catch any y values bigger than the y value of your point, then it's a local maximum. I'll show you that on a graph. And similarly with local minimum, if you think a point is a local minimum, you should be able to draw a circle centered around that point that doesn't catch any points with smaller y values. So that's kind of your test, and I will show you on a picture, but that's what I want to think about. So it's pretty straightforward. You're just looking for the smallest point, but it doesn't have to be the smallest on the whole graph. It just has to be smaller than everything close by. Okay, and then the last one, inflection point. An inflection point is a point where a graph changes concavity. So let me give you just a couple of pictures here, and then I will give you a specific example in the next video. So if I have a graph that is doing something like this. Uh, local maximums and local minimums. I would say this point is a local maximum. I can draw a little tiny circle around this that does not catch a single y value that's bigger than that point, the y value of that point. And in the same sense, this is a local minimum and this is a local minimum. Um, inflection points, I'm looking for my bend to change. So this is absolutely something you'll have to approximate, but you should be able to, I hope, spot some really clear concavity on this graph. This is all definitely bending upward. This is giving me that smile shape. So definitely concave up. Here, it's definitely concave down, which means somewhere in the middle, and again, I'm approximating, somewhere in the middle is an inflection point. So feel free to do a little approximating, but make sure you're on the point where it looks like it switches. So it has to straighten out for just a second and then switch to bending the other way. Same thing here, definitely concave down, definitely concave up. So somewhere right in the middle will be an inflection point. Okay, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.